Today we're going to talk about prompt caching. So, fascinating topic about prompt caching. Uh, stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to actually use prompt caching in a real life uh, AI scenario. So, prompt caching actually helps you save a lot of tokens and save you basically in costs um, with different providers. So, I also wanted to explain to you what the differences are in prompt caching for the different providers. So. OpenAI has uh, given us a really good um, example here. So if this is the original prompt and then you send another prompt, for example, with the same system prompt, but then another document if, or if you're coding, it will keep your file the same, um, but just you make some coding differences, uh, meaning that you can cache those tokens. So how it works if the beginning is the same of your message that you sent to OpenAI, um, that will still be cached, but the new tokens will basically not be cached. Uh, if the beginning of the message changes, like the first token, then you will not hit the cache, as you can see here. Um, so that's how OpenAI does it, and they do it for you automatically. So you don't have to do anything to use OpenAI caching. Now, for Entropic, it's different. You have to specify yourself with cache control on how and what you want to cache. Um, so each message needs to add the cache control for you. So the differences is are opening out as it automatically and Anthropic, you need to basically um, provide it yourself or you need to specify what you want to cache. Open AI, you can save up to 50%, but Anthropic, you can save up to 90%. Now we at Request C, we have done this for you, meaning any provider that uh, provides caching, we will enforce as much as possible the caching so you can save up to the most tokens. Um, with Entropic, that's up to 90%. So let's go into a real example of how to use caching um, and what the differences in cost could be. So I'm gonna go here, uh, I'm in, in climb here. I have a basic state game uh, written by AI and I'm just gonna say, can you please review my state game and tell me uh, how it builds? Um, and basically here, we are not using caching. So I made an own version that is not using caching from request T just to see what the cost is gonna be. So you see here, I need to review. Um, we can see the, the code review, game architecture, uh, and so on, technical features. Uh, I'm just gonna cancel this. Uh, and I'm gonna say, what can we improve? Boom. So this should normally not be cached. Um, you can see it's 12,000 input tokens already. Um, now, the handy part is that you can review everything in the Requesty platform. So if I go to Requesty and refresh the page, I can see here, can you please review my snake game? And I can see caching tokens and cache tokens. So we don't see any here, we don't see any here. So in all of our tasks, basically nothing was cached. Uh, and you see like six cents, five cents, three cents. Now, let's go to Rucode, uh, where we do have the caching because the API providers requesty also use Cloud Sonnet 3.5. Uh, and I'm going to say, please review my snake game and give me information about it. Uh, and now that's going to work for you. It's going to review the snake game. Um, Actually, within um, Rucode, you can see the cache here. So we'll see if, if that works. Uh, so notable strengths, it's working. Now I'm going to cancel, and I'm going to say, how can I improve it? And we'll wait for the response. And there we go. Now let's go and see here. You can see the cache straight away in Rucode and our total API cost seems quite a bit lower. Now, if I go back here to my logs and refresh, you can see out of a sudden, um, so I use 3.7 for the non-caching and I use 3.5 for caching. The first one was five cents, but then I go to two cents, one cents, and this is all because of the cache tokens. And you can see most of my tokens uh, are actually cached. So 14,000 of the 17,000 are cached here, and here's 17,000 of the 17,900 are cached. So it has a massive difference in price. Uh, and we can also actually see this in cost management uh, within Requesty. And we can see here, we were already at 63.5% caching and we're more than half in the cost of requests. So 
please, if you're building any AI solutions, think about these things. If you're using Klein or Root code for coding, uh, caching is a very powerful thing. We try to optimize caching as much as possible, especially for entropic models, uh, reaching up to 80% uh, for some of our users. Hopefully this was helpful.